Good morning. I'm back in Kentucky. Let's see my eyes there. The sun is so bright this morning. Look, beautiful. The lake is like glass. Yeah, there's a little bit of a ripple out there. A little breeze. Oh, I had just an amazing week, weekend of fellowship and just beauty. And, well, I always have that, but it was a little bit special being with friends and from all over the country. Literally, we had the West Coast represented, the East Coast. Um, yeah, it was awesome down in Texas, but it's always good to be home. It's always good to be home and caught up on some sleep. Y'all, I've, I've learned I will not take a 6 a.m. flight again. Remind me, anybody who knows me, don't do that. Even though I'm the early morning person, um, this is where I got a little bit prideful. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem for me. Well, in order to get on a flight that takes off at 6 a.m., you've got to get up at like 3.30 or 4. It was, um, and then I was going backwards in time. <laughs> so I had to adjust to a time change, losing time and wanting, of course, to stay, you know, with friends and catch up and not miss out on any of that to take a nap. Oh my gosh. All right. Anyway, enough of that. Um, getting caught up now and I survived. It was okay. <laughs> and it was worth it. It was worth it. But note to self. <laughs> um, so this morning, I had the absolute pleasure of reading John, two chapters of John, John 7 and 8. And there is a lot, there's a lot in every paragraph of the, of these books, of this big book of the Bible. Um, so what stood out to me and the message for today is to be heartfelt and to even be able to discern when others are heartfelt. And that's like an inner knowing. And you know, our logic blocks us. And this is exactly what was happening where it can block us. Because there are some things we just know, we feel, we know, we don't know how we know, we just know. And if we spend too much time thinking about things, we can talk ourselves right out of things or reason our way right out of things that we know better. We know better. And that is what Jesus was facing uh, as he was speaking and trying to get people to hear, not just listen, but hear, or not just hear, but listen. You know what I'm saying? There's, they're just different things. Um, seeing and not seeing, and that, those are the stories that we got. He's, he's healed a blind man, and the Pharisees are like basically holding court, and they're like, "Wait a minute, okay, so tell us again how this happened." Jesus mixes. There's a man who has been blind from birth, so. This is an innate, like, something that he was born with. And he was uh, begging on the street because it would have been hard for him to work. And Jesus, on a Sabbath, of course, uh, he mixes, they t sh tell us that he mixed mud. And then he applied the mud to the man's eyes and then told him to go uh, to the river and or the water and wash it off and then he would be able to see so not only is he working on the sabbath but he causes this man to work on the sabbath as well there everybody's like running to the pharisees like blah 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 you got us he's working on the sabbath so but it's a miracle this man can see who else can do and, and this is a miracle. Who else could do this? But of course the Pharisees are like, no. Even They even point to themselves as proof 
that Jesus is not who he says he is. Because if he were, we would believe him. But do you see any rulers believing in him? No. But they go to his house, they interview his parents, and then they go back to the man, they interview the man, they interview the, like, they're doing all of this logical work, like trying to, um, you know, disprove whether this is, was a miracle or not. Did he violate the, the law of working on the Sabbath? And before this happened, even that we were brought into a conversation where people were like, well, he's from Galilee. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't the Messiah just appear? Like we wouldn't know that he was from somewhere and certainly not Galilee. <laughs> so we're brought into all these circular log logical conversations. And yet there are some things you're not going to know logically or by human reasoning. And Jesus keeps telling this, telling them this, and yet they can't get themselves out of it. Um, and, oh, got a dog saying hi. And in the heart of this, at the very end of chapter seven, we get a little scene. It's at the end, of the, all of this is taking place too, we're told. Um, during the festival of shelters. The festival is coming to an end and um, we're told that Jesus shouts. He shouts to the crowds and he says, all who come to me will get living water that comes from the heart. And boy, I really went, I went in the science direction a little bit this morning. I thought about blood and what living water would mean and blood is is living water it's a liquid it's a special type of water but there's a lot of water in it we know that it's mostly water with a little bit of solids mixed into it and its function is to take you know, the oxygen from the air that these beautiful trees and greenery uh, provide for us here on Earth. And it exchanges and it takes out the carbon dioxide. It delivers oxygen to our whole body, like our blood, I mean, uh, excuse me, our organs, our bones, our flesh, everything, everything needs oxygen and the living water, blood, the living water is in us. So even though Jesus hasn't died yet and he hasn't given us the Holy Spirit yet, he is standing up there in front of these people, breathing, speaking these words, these living words, and their bodies are taking, we're all breathing the same air and we all and our bodies do the same process. Like these are some of the things like biology is like the great equalizer of all humans. Uh, we all are limited by time, by space, by our dimensions. And yet we have access to like another dimension, another, but we've got to get logic out of the way. <laughs> logic will block. Logic blocks the heart um, in many cases. We've got to overcome it, which requires also overcoming our ego, our pride. Uh, will people think I'm weird if I believe something that's, that can't be quite explained? But yet we know it. Um, I was actually reading a really great book, one of my favorite authors, uh, yesterday on the plane, Richard Rohr, The Naked Now, he was like, ask any couple in love. <laughs> like, they'll tell you. Or any, um, you know, of course we can explain maybe parental love a little bit better because, you know, we actually grow the child in our bodies and it came from our DNA, and, you know, and all of that. So maybe it makes a little bit more logical sense, but love, love is kind of unexplainable. 
but yet you know it when you feel it. And we even have language for it. These words, yes, hey, good morning. I'm talking about chapters, John chapters seven and eight this morning, and specifically the last few sentences of John chapter seven, the living water. And Jesus is shouting. We don't see a lot of examples where Jesus is shouting. And he talks about the living water coming from his heart that flows from the heart. And so we're actually going a little bit of a bio biological direction this morning with blood, talking about what blood does and how it takes air. And of course we breathe air in and out. And you know, we, it's done for us automatically. So we often take it for granted. We don't think about the miracle of this. And that when we take in information from other people, and even when you meet people and you kind of feel that connection, there's energy there, like you're clicking, it doesn't always make logical sense. You Sometimes you're just attracted to people. How does that happen? Well, it's the heart doing its job. Um, and even our bodies, our nervous system, because it's all talking to each other. It's all relying on this exchange change of information. So we are really complex beings that are constantly exchanging information with the world, with other people, um, all the time without even having to think about it. And yet the human, because we can think about thinking and we have this brain, we, it will often limit us. It will keep us blind. And at the end of chapter eight, Jesus is accusing the Pharisees <laughs> Because they're, they're even coming to him. These two chapters, I think, are really interesting because you see Jesus do something he doesn't do a lot in the Bible, which is kind of almost like defending himself. Like, he, can't you see? Like, he's getting in these sort of almost defensive, these arguments with the Pharisees. Sometimes he does it and sometimes he doesn't. A lot of the times he's like, which is why we're even told that he speaks in parables. Like, Y'all can't understand because we've kind of made it so that you can't. You have to be open-minded and being willing to get logic out of the way a little bit and let your whole self receive the information. And then you can see. But he accuses the Pharisees at the end. And he says, y'all are guilty because you have the ability to see and you refuse to. You're being into willfully, willfully blind. The blind who really don't get it are going to get a pass because they truly are blind. They're spiritually blind. They just don't get it. You people who are supposed to be representing God and then you're refusing to see and you're trying to throw every logical argument at it are, are the ones who are really guilty because you're being willfully blind. You refused to see on purpose. Um, because again, they are enjoying their titles, their uh, position as top dog in the community and experts in the law. And Jesus is threatening their whole understanding of the world. But if only they knew, if only they knew, if only they would allow themselves to know. And that is a heartfelt thing. Jesus is speaking like he's shouting at the crowds. I'm going to just go right back to that, that, like read these few powerful sentences about Jesus um, shouting to the crowds about living water flowing from the heart. We all have access to that. It's in us. It's in us. Get your logic out of the way. No. No from a heart place. And if you're having trouble logically with this, just look to a few people that, a few other humans, real humans in your life that you love, that you have a bond with. Or even think about the words. Um, think about even apologizing. That's always in forgiveness. Like we know when somebody is telling us a real apology, a heartfelt apology versus a, okay, I'm sorry, forgive me. 
Like we know the difference, but how do we know? Because the words, if we're relying just on the words and logic, we've got to believe either way, right? But there's something that we know. The heartfelt is a concept that we all understand. And sometimes that requires getting the mind and the logic out of the way. Um, now, even in that example that I gave, I could just even see a logical fallacy. I'm like, well, a lot of times we know things are heartfelt also because then they follow up with actions. People who mean what they say act differently as well. So it's a whole package. See, we're taking in all of these information and sometimes we've got to get our mind out of the way or our logic and be open-minded so that things can get to the heart, to get to the heart level. Okay, ah, back in the humidity. Well, it was very humid in Texas, I, I must say. Um, but we had a really, oh, you guys, I'm so lucky, I'm so blessed. I think we all are. I mean, the fact that we, yeah, can breathe and our bodies just do this, these miraculous things for us. Um, but you've got to slow down and pay attention and be open. And you too can get living water. All right. Have a great day. Rise and shine. And today we focused on John chapters 7 and 8. And particular, particularly... Um, the end of John chapter 7. All right. Bye.